Josh A is a fairly famous musician who has over 20 albums released on major streaming services. I found him a couple of years ago and fell in love with his discography, but lately, Josh's music really hasn't felt the same. So today, I want to talk about what happened to Josh A and why Fearless 2 was the final straw. So this is a niche thing to really talk about, especially as a first video, but I want to because for the better part of my odd high school career, uh, Josh A's music was there for me, especially during a time of crisis. Uh, I want to start this video off by saying that I love Josh's music and I'm grateful for his music and it really started off in high school when I fell in love with his music like Better Off Dead 3. <gasps> In the dark I come alive Too much left for suicide On my level do I die Too many dead Every headline dread Keep it out of my head I don't know what I can say now All these sides of suicide They keep me up like every night Enemy of my enemy You know I'm always down to ride And then I quickly became obsessed with not only Josh But his common collaborator Jake Hill uh, My life quickly changed thereafter Loss filled my life, and it was hard to function in a lot of ways. I listened to Josh and Jake pretty often at this point. I found their lyrics resonating, and shortly into 2019, Jake dropped Solace 2, and Josh dropped Fearless. Let me show you just how far I can go. I've been running away, the only road I know. Misery F, yeah, listen to that. That's the sound of all the tears are leaking out of my back. I mean, I've been fearless, I let him feel this You know, I spit it no cap when I kill this I'm better hit him with the rest, let him hear this Where this war tour better be a field trip Jake's lyrics resonated with me much deeper than Josh But I still fell for Josh's music It was emo pop mixed with an emo rap undertone In a lot of his songs, and I loved it Especially since a lot of them had a Halloween or horror vibe to them It's a vibe that I've always loved Time kept passing, and then Josh and Jake secured their spot to some of my favorite musicians when they dropped their fifth, and as of this video's release, final collaboration album, Save Our Souls. I listened to it every day during the summer it dropped, and at this point, I was involved in communities with other fans of the two, even going as far as to create my own Discord server for them. I loved that community as well, and made some real friends. Save Our Souls spoke to me, and still does to this day. Then, Josh went solo for a while. He dropped Disgraced, which wasn't horrible, it was just pretty okay. I'm a disgrace, I can't be sane, I try new things, but... It wasn't obvious at first, but Josh's formula was wearing out, which I would describe as shallow emo pop and sometimes banger emo rap, which is fine. My issue was never how shallow it was. Shallow is a demeaning word, and I don't mean any malintent when I use that word here. It was really able to collect people of all ages to enjoy the music. But Josh's lyrics were personal, with a distance left by the artist to allow connection to reach more people whether that distance was intentional or not. Let me clarify that I love Josh's songs that have quote-unquote shallow lyrics, and I don't mean any bad things when I say that. It's just that Disgrace wasn't a super deep project, or at least in my opinion it wasn't. Then, You're Not Alone came out. No, I'm not perfect, never said I was. I keep it on the surface, never give enough. Got BPD and OCD, so when you see me, you don't really see me. Leading up to it, I feared the worst for You're Not Alone. Mood Swings was a single leading into it, and the guitar was, I swear, in a very similar key and the exact same pattern from Worst Mistakes from Save Our Souls. Maybe a little higher. This was a bigger sign that Josh's formula was wearing out. Older fans who weren't such mindless followers of Josh made the right comparison that he was making the same song over and over again. 
This was a wake-up call, but I was still a pretty big dick rider of both Josh and Jake and wasn't willing to accept that fact. You're Not Alone dropped, and it was such a different pace for Josh, but it also felt like such a return to form. The album had a bit of everything. After You're Not Alone, Josh dropped Lonely Vibes. Fuck, wait, shit, no, fuck, not this one, not this one. Had to cut her off, it was painless. Show me fake love, it was shameless. I should have known that we would never make it. Now my heart is cold, feeling fake I just want to move on. Which feels like the amalgamation of people saying Josh makes the same song over and over again and him making shallow emo pop. It was just kind of boring in my opinion. It had a lot to offer, but it felt just like an entire album of the same, which would be fine if You're Not Alone hadn't existed to switch up the formula even a little bit. The lyrics were shallow in a lot of instances, not to say that Josh doesn't get personal in key bix, and that works great. The album did try out new stuff and revisit old stuff, such as the song Outlaw, which sounds like it was made for a Ford commercial, And the song Doubt Me, which sounds like Dude Perfect Commission Josh for a Dude Perfect type beat. Mind you, I make these jokes, but I actually like both of these songs, but neither are close to my favorites or top three. Lonely Vibes was just basic and not personal enough for my taste, but people liked it, and that's fine. Enough for Josh to release a Lonely Vibes Deluxe. I'm really doing this myself, don't need nobody, don't need help them, buddy, you ain't been through hell and back, it's funny, you ain't dealt with that, you acting up on every track, you lying, you ain't selling that, you pretty good at acting, man, you should get in a war for that, don't talk. Which, again, it, there wasn't much to say about it. It spiced up the track list a little bit, but it was more just like a new EP of Josh's music, followed by the original Lonely Vibes album, and at the end, to conclude, it had the painless remixes. Really wasn't super interesting and it kind of was just boring as an album and then josh surprised all of his fans when he announced fearless 2 the sequel to my favorite josh album can anybody help me i know i've been stuck in my way so don't gotta tell me because lately i've been trying to change and it's unhealthy the way that i've been taking the blame i let him hate me because i don't really care i was excited and I was hopeful that Josh would return to his roots and take steps forward, as he not only did that with You're Not Alone, but he did that with the original Fearless. The album came out, and good lord, it was a nightmare, at least in my opinion. Let's start at the top, shall we? The album starts with Long Way to Go, intro, which is a pretty okay, slow, harmonic track. We still got a long way to go. We still got a long way to go. Oh. Like I said, it's okay, and it's the closest we've gotten to You're Not Alone since You're Not Alone itself, but it's more boring. It was a decent intro, but not very similar to the OG Fearless, which I'm not saying it needs to be identical at all. That's not what I mean. What I mean to say is that Fearless had its own personality, I would argue, and it really seems that if you're going to make a long-awaited sequel to that album, you would want the start of it to feel more in line with the original. Then, after a little bit, the track switches up and Josh is talking with Mr. T. Lex Fight, which is just fucking classic. Josh's old projects have had subtle Lex appearances and references, which I love. It's iconic and immediately brought me back to when I was first discovering Josh's music and hearing Lonely Mailbox and Mr. T. Lexify when I realized that Josh was friends with the Z House. I loved the Z House when it was a thing, and somehow I had never really heard about Josh, but then I went back and rewatched some of the old Z House videos, and I heard some mentions of him. So it's just kind of a funny, small world how a few years later after the Z House ends, that's when I discover Josh's music. 
So the Lex conversation in the intro of Fearless 2 was such a nice breath of fresh yet familiar air. Then, Josh pulls another move from his past with his obvious sci-fi and pop culture influence when the quote-unquote fearless version of Josh teleports in with the Call of Duty Black Ops zombies teleport sound. Thanks, man. Yeah, I was thinking about... Wait, what the hell? Oh my god! Josh, something's wrong with the universe. We need your help. And tells our normal Josh, who I'm just going to refer to as Josh from now on, that he needs his help to round up all the other Joshes to defeat Lil Revive, who is normal josh's alter ego uh but basically it's most of where his side stuff goes usually like b-side tracks that weren't good enough to make the latest or upcoming album josh makes an obvious reference to spider-man no way home uh josh is confused and fearless josh makes a joke about copyright which is funny and fitting for josh's old style next track is vengeance which i think the most notable thing about this track is that josh makes a reference to the i for gore kid who ratioed walmart yeah, feels good to be back on a track, no mess when I sap like this. I've been coming for the back when I rap like this. Went pop, now my money do backflips. But they must have forgot, they must have forgot that I rap down, calling them sea bass. Everything I drop in heat, I'ma bring that too much green, but I don't really need that. One of the greats, you know I'ma be that. Funny enough, he's actually a huge Josh A fan, and from my understanding, Josh and Seabass, as he's named, are actually friends, or at least they're mutuals on Twitter. Vengeance is eerily similar to Josh's song called Revenge from the You're Not Alone era. Bring it right back to the ends and I'm back on the transplant. So that shows how bad for it. They don't really want to get it when I tap into the vision when I'm back on the raps on tracks. Like, I am not one of you. They never heard of me. Path is not written. So do not refer to me. They gonna be feeling this for an eternity. Money, ridiculous second absurdities. So I thought that it was supposed to be like that. Like it was intentional. And I still think it is. But it never really attempts to comment or criticize on the style of his, which is the impression I got was going to be happening due to the opener and the track list having similar track names such as Revenge being similar to Vengeance and Warzone also from Here Not Alone being similar to the track Warfare. The track makes no attempt to criticize, reflect, or really make comment or indication that this was meant to be a reflection, so I'm not so sure. The next track is Ghost. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Ghost is a pretty similar track to the first third of You're Not Alone, which I like in concept, but like its predecessor, it makes no attempt to really reflect on this style. So at this point, it feels more like a You're Not Alone 2 and not really a Fearless 2, which is fine. But at this point, it really seemed like a missed opportunity not to change it up like it is in Warfare. Without the existence of Warfare, this entire album wouldn't seem like such a missed opportunity or the concept would be drastically different. It would seem more like a collection of songs that are simple revisitations of old styles, which is also an interesting topic, don't get me wrong. But the story continues at the end of Ghost, with Fearless Josh explaining to Josh that Lil Revive is after them, yada yada yada. Then Fearless Josh says that the first Josh they have to find is the You're Not Alone Josh, which seems weird to have two songs before what feels like the actual beginning of the story. Fearless Josh states that he's quote-unquote obsessed with proving himself, which feels like an interesting reflection on the past that could be explored more in the next song. And then, Warfare commences. Most rappers just surface ain't more there. Post whips when on Spotify they pour there. Got lazy now I'm cutting into your share. Better get the ammunition now it's warfare. Kinda sad all these rappers getting mad cause I focus on my craft and I had to overlap every one of you. So down bad way to focus on the racks that you didn't even know this to me is very dumb of you. Warfare starts with a You're Not Alone era type song from Josh where he talks about needing to prove himself and that he's a real one and that he doesn't need the money but he makes the money. Then, halfway through, the song switches up to a current Josh doing a style I actually really like. They probably hate it cause your ego been building up You finally get a money but your soul isn't filled enough Like we get it, you perfected the vision You quit your job and you did it You finally made something for yourself It feels familiar, yet new If that really makes any sense The lyrics are pure self-reflection And it feels like what this entire album should and will be I feel like Josh wanted to revisit old styles by making pure songs using that old style, but then also wanting to make a beat switch album where part of a song was the old style being used, and then having the newer style come in and combat that with words. 
Warfare is an amazing song for what I think Josh was trying to do. Not that it's particularly groundbreaking for the genre or the industry as a whole, but it was the best song for what the idea of the album seemed to be, at least to me. Then Warfare ends and Bipolar starts. I'm sick of being told being myself isn't working like everything I do is offer no purpose But I feel the greatness inside of me, yeah, it's like digging a grave I unearthed that I'm always at war with the past and the current And my mental health got my brain always swirling and scary It's kind of like I'm tired dirt and I'm bipolar, yeah, I carry the burden Bipolar feels like it's in the same vein as Vengeance and like, I mean, it, it's okay, it's kind of boring Doesn't really push the story forward much at all and doesn't serve the larger story at all either which is okay, I suppose, because the next song is On My Own Skit, and it's really a nice change of pace to see Josh doing skits again. It really adds character to the album, in my opinion. Josh splits up with Fearless Josh and You're Not Alone Josh, and now Josh has to look for Disgrace Josh. And the next song is Mixed Emotions. Can anybody help me? I know I've been stuck in my way, so I've got to tell me. Because lately I've been trying to change. And it's unhealthy the way that I've been taking the blame. I let them hate me because I don't really care. Which is another song pretty similar to Mood Swings, which Mood Swings was pretty similar to Worst Mistakes and yada, yada, yada. Which I guess they could really be described as something like a catchy hook with a catchy guitar loop. It's not bad at all, but this once again is a song that doesn't serve the grander story. And I can't really tell if Mixed Emotions is really supposed to be like Disgrace, because to me, it feels more like some like younger stuff, jo or like younger Josh would make. Uh, and that's really the issue with this project. You don't really know what version of Josh this is, whether it's supposed to be this current Josh, or it's supposed to be Disgrace Josh, or whatever, because we know that two versions of a Josh, of Josh can share a track. If it was all just different styles, I can maybe get that. And frankly, that'd be a lot closer to the OG. It just feels like a missed opportunity to not have a 10 to 15 track self-reflection album in the format of Warfare, where Josh revisits an old style, then has current Josh's new style clash to not only reflect on that style, but that era of his life. Way more interesting of a concept to match with the amazing story concept. After mixed emotions, Lost Kids take center stage. I do this for the Lost Kids. And I, honest to God, thought this was more of like a Lonely Vibes type song. Like Disgrace had like decently low energy vocal performances from Josh with songs like Suicide Bench, which don't get me wrong, I really enjoy. I'm not saying that the low energy is bad. I just think that I'm using the low energy as a way to categorize and give characteristics to Disgrace. And I really don't see how this is at all like Disgrace, if that's what it's supposed to be. I would love to hear other thoughts on this because I truly don't know what the goals of these songs are. Because if it's meant to be just a rehashing of an old style, it feels lazy when songs like Warfare exist. Next track is Smile, which is another decent song, and this actually feels like a Disgrace era Josh song. Take some time to smile, I can, I can, eh. take some time to smile, I can, I can. It's honestly kind of weird that Justin Stone seems to be on this song more than Josh. Like, if you're making an album or song about self-reflection, it seems kind of weird to include features from people who aren't you. I'll talk more about that later with Sober. For now, we're on to Confessions. Why would God bless me and then he proceed to curse me? Feels like every person that I fall in love with hurts me. Why does in the reaper take me if he's always lurking? And why does every version of myself feel like the worst me? And this is what I would say another Lonely Vibes type song. Granted, Lonely Vibes and Disgrace aren't too different, but I think Disgrace was a few tones darker. It's an okay song. And that's pretty much all I have to say. Now we move on to Revelation Skit, which is another breath of fresh air. What I do not understand, though, is why the skit starts with Disgrace Josh and Normal Josh first meeting. As if the last three songs have not been, like, like weren't a thing. So, from a story perspective, it really doesn't make any sense. Like, narratively, where do the last three songs come from? Like, the songs have nothing to do with the story anymore, and it's kind of jarring. I do honestly kind of like that Disgrace Josh drops a huge part of the story so casually and just moves on. I don't think it's the funniest thing ever, but it's kind of funny, and it fits Josh's humor that he injects into his music. 
then after it's I feel like dying so go ahead and dig my grave break me to pieces I can't change hate that I need it blow my brains if you really leave it can't be safe so kill all my feelings which I think is a pretty good song but I don't really know why Josh gave such like an uncharacteristically unenthusiastic performance and it irritates me a bit just because his vocals just do not match the song's energy at all. Like, I feel like it wants to be like a headbanger, a headbanging rock song that you can scream the words to in concert or some shit like that. But the vocals are just kind of boring. And it doesn't, it feels me leaving like, feels me leaving like empty. Like, it feels like it tried to be a more upbeat, more banger type version of Suicide Bends. But it kind of fails in all regards to that. And then after I Feel Like Dying, this album does the exact same thing that Disgrace did, where it tacked on all the singles right at the end, with no regard to their story or their tone placement. The following song is Sober, the one I mentioned earlier. We got a problem in America. Too many people dying, yeah, but we don't really care enough. Addiction through the roof, but we're too caught up in hysteria. Too busy on our phones to see the problems in our area. And it kind of comes off as like a Tom McDonald type song, except it's about a serious issue. And I don't mean like it's a bad song. Like Tom McDonald obviously makes bad music, but Josh, this one isn't. But Josh's tone comes off very similar to Tom McDonald, and it's kind of off putting. But Josh is talking about real life issues, do not get me wrong. He's talking about addiction and how it's a huge problem in America, but then the song kind of pivots and does something weird, and then it has Nefix come on and spit some shit that really isn't really pertaining to what Josh was talking about. I need something to get me out of this reality. Feels like a dream, no a nightmare drowning me. I look around, I feel like everyone's surrounding me. Doubting me, anxiety is peaking, heart is pounding, please. I need a change in my life from pain and the strife is draining me. Yeah, I could blame my own lies. I tell myself that I'm pretty much worthless, but that ain't true. Just haven't found my purpose. I got this, I could come back. I'm alive in this world, it ain't so bad. This probably would have been a great time for Josh A and Jake Hill to collab again, since it's been two years since the last time they worked together for their song Run Up. Yeah. Let it burn. See you to the witches, cause you bitches never learn. I can hear your heart beating. You like to kind of soft. I got plenty good reasons just to watch your body drop. I, I, I budget for a broke motherfucker wanna press me. I love a man, I joke. Motherfuckers wanna check me. You know I'm a deadbeat. Hide a backseat. I'ma put you in the dirt, man, if you really wanna drag me. And they haven't been on anything together since then after making five collaborative projects. I'm not saying that this song should have had a feature at all, but I think Jake would have had more to say regarding what Josh was talking about than what Netflix did. Regardless, I don't think that this song should have had a feature at all. If you want to have some meaning in your songs about your traumas and your issues and things that you feel are problems, bringing in features who aren't you kind of subtracts from that. I think Tabby put it best when he said, if, if if you're confessing a personal thing that is in your life, don't use a fucking feature to talk about it. If this is your life and you're talking about it and you're actually sorry and you're trying to sound actually apologetic and honest, do not pay someone else to say something that you can fucking say yourself and not an over-edited way, just fucking say it. Sober is a pretty decent song and it feels like a mixture of the original Fearless and You're Not Alone. After Sober, Vultures plays and I I gotta talk about Vultures and how he leaked it a couple years ago and how I think it reflects Josh's progression as an artist. First, we'll talk about the story. Vultures has no story up until right at the end of the song where Lil Revive comes in. And then after that, we get three singles that have no story to them. So is that meant to be like a cliffhanger? Because it really doesn't feel like it's supposed to be. It feels like the story just wasn't finished and the album was released. And secondly, for Vultures, it was originally leaked by Josh a couple years ago. I think it was before Disgrace was even released. 
it sounded like this. And this is what it sounds like now. I gave you everything you took. I guess I'll let you find out what happens when I let go. I think that this is really the pinnacle of what has happened to Josh, because this has happened before. Here's a clip from a few years ago, which I think was also pre-disgrace release, which was a song titled California. In California, my demons follow me. It's so hard to get some say. When I'm running for my life, every time I'm California, my demons And then here's what California sounds like now. In California, my demons follow me. It's so hard to get some say. Now, don't get me wrong when I say that I love, love California. It's my favorite song off of Lonely Vibes. And I still think that even though the leak is different than the actual release song, I do still really, really like the release song. I just think that the, I think like the plucky guitar that goes on in the background of the leak mixed with like the piano almost like this, like the few chords of the piano in the background as well. Mixed with Josh's vocals, I think with proper mixing and actually being fully released would have been better than the rock route that Josh took with California. And, and I just want to clarify that I do love the rock version of California. I think it still sounds amazing. But I just think that Josh switched up what he wanted to do with it, which is entirely his choice. It's entirely in his power to do so, and I'm not criticizing that choice. I just think that it's... A missed opportunity to release the song you had and then instead put all your eggs into this basket where you go into it wanting to make a rock song like California if that makes any sense but then vultures is its own story where the original production was grimy the vocals had like their own like distortion to them and it sounded really cool and it was a song wanted by the fan base ever since it was leaked like every album people were like hey, Josh, is Vultures going to be on this album? And Josh was like, oh, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. And then I think at one point he said the song was deleted or that it was never coming out. And then Fearless 2's track list was announced and we see that Vultures was coming out and everyone lost their fucking shit and everyone was excited. And then we got what we got, which was a much more like commercialized and pop version of what we got. And like, I don't, I don't think it's a bad song, but I think that the original sample given the same treatment that that uh, that the California one uh, could have gotten with like more mixing and making it sound better, obviously, and then officially releasing it, I think that would have been so much better than what we got because we got like a like standard like it's a standard Josh A performance at this point instead of like the cool vocal performance of the original leak. And I think that that is my problem with both of these leaks uh, coming out as full songs because, of course, the leaks are going to sound different. I'm not saying that they sh that he should have released them as is. I'm saying that I think that the creative decisions he made there are indicative of his creative decisions as a whole where he kind of commercialized them and made them less like him. You know what I mean? Like, it just... Especially Vultures. Vultures really felt like a commercialized Josh song instead of a Josh song. Uh, a theory that I've seen around that from other like Discord servers and communities surrounding Josh is that Josh just entirely deleted Vultures, like the original song, and people wanted it back and he felt like bringing it back, so he just remade the song. I am choosing to believe that. I think Josh would have released that sample if he had it, but he, uh, my guess is he didn't, so he couldn't. But if he did, then that's kind of a shot in the foot because it doesn't feel nearly as good as that leak could have been if it was polished and released. But I don't know. I'm, I'm open to discussion about this just because I think that there is a lot of, um, a lot of discussion to be had around this type of thing where when artists self-leak their own songs and then they don't come out like exactly how they how the viewer or the audience expects it to 
does the audience have the right to get upset with that? I would say yes. I'm, and I don't think upset is the word that I would use to describe my feelings surrounding the California leak and Vulture's leak. But I listen to those leaks and I can't help but think like, damn, I think this song would have been 10 times better if it was mixed and polished in this format instead of like California being produced in the rock format or not format, but in the style of a rock song or Vulture's being produced in that style of pop. I am not I'm not saying they're bad songs like I said I just think that the samples were more interesting. It really felt like he traded in his own sound of the like OG clips for a more like studio produced type music, which is fine. It's totally his choice. But I personally think that his music was better when it was the stuff like the original leaks and not the more commercialized versions of it if that makes any sense. And the and like the weird thing with this album is like I don't even really care to cover the last three songs because they don't talk about any of the story at all. Like genuinely, they they're just three singles tacked on to the end. And like it it's it's frustrating because like if you told me in 2019 that Josh would release Fearless 2 and it centers on Josh finding his former selves, I would think that's a great concept. And then I would go into theories about like how it could be about where he collects his former selves and merges together to fight his quote-unquote demons and the overall message would be that his past made him stronger than he ever was i would think that that's incredible easy his best album and album concepts and then we got this an album that feels like it wants to be three different but similar things at once it wants to be a self-reflection album where josh or current josh talks to and reflects on former versions of himself but it also wants to be an album where he does what he's done on every album as of late as a way to revisit those eras of himself but it also wants to be a collage of new and old ideas put into individual songs instead of an overarching story and it tries to be all three of these things instead of a focused project where the main idea is honed in and on and fleshed out And that's sort of my takeaway from Josh's last four albums is that he doesn't really know what he wants. Disgrace was its own thing and it was a nice project of variety of types of songs and vibes of songs and it wasn't well received. So Josh took that to heart to create his words, quote, his magnum opus with You're Not Alone, which was a pretty heartfelt and personal thing. But then he dropped that and then released Lonely Vibes, which was primarily kind of shallow emo pop, like I said, with some variation in there, of course. Uh, And then he dropped Fearless 2, which seemed to be a return to form, but then it turned out to be a half-baked story embedded into an album filled with a variety of song types, none of which truly stand out among Josh's best. I've matured a lot in my life with Josh's music as a key player. I owe a lot to Josh and his music. But it's hard to sit back and watch Josh lose a lot of who he was as he matures and grows up as well. Overall, I'm left with a feeling of nostalgia for his past work and disappointment as I wish Fearless 2 and Josh were better than they are. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know it's a weird and niche thing to make a video about, but... I wanted to put my thoughts into something creative instead of going on little micro rants about it. Uh, and I just want to say that I have no hatred or animosity towards Josh. He seems like a nice enough guy and he's dropped music that has actually changed my life and been there for me when I was at like all time lows. So uh, I just want to put that out there that I think th- this wasn't coming from a place of hatred. It was coming from a place of wanting to see him do the best he can and not only reach out to new fans, but also please his older ones as well. Uh, I think that's all that I have to say. So this is Aperture signing off.